Cal, given his week, how impressive, a much more impressive of a performance was that from Kevin, kind of with the stress of what was going on this week with him? I don't, you know, I don't think it, I don't, I think he was great all week. And, you know, the team's getting better. What you're seeing is a team that can play fast and a team that can grind it out. You're seeing when I put Jared and PJ in there, a team that can really, really rebound. Um, our assist to turnover ratio, which was underwater now, is going the right way. We've kind of figured out quad A and Shea, and um, I gave Hami a hug in front of the team. They gave him a standing ovation. You know, it's been hard. And I wasn't going to kick him to the curb. I wasn't going to throw him under the bus. It's been hard. I've been spending, told the team, 90% of my time was figuring out how do I get this kid going. But I got to win games. And I told them, uh, if, if, if someone's not playing great, it's okay. Just be better next game. But don't expect to play when someone's playing better. Here, here's the thing. Jared had 15 rebounds. He would have had 20 if he had two-handed rebounds on the other ones. He went with one hand. But if you're, he's playing in front of you, and he's getting 15 rebounds, if you go in, you better rebound, or he's going back in. And it's just how it is. And, and, but we need Nick. We need Sasha. Shea was good again. Um, eight assists, one turn. I mean, you know, we, uh, we're, we're right before your eyes, we're becoming a better basketball team. And it, you know, it wore me out. But yesterday in practice, what I said to him, at one point I stopped him and I said, the reason I'm so relaxed and having fun coaching you, I'm not fighting everybody. It was only a month ago, three weeks ago, every, half the team, it was a fight to get them to play how we were trying to get them to play. But the other side of it is just, it took us a while to figure out the team and figure out Kevin Knox and figure out how we were going to play Jared and what we were going to do. And, Jared joining us midseason made it hard. John, how much of a boost is it for any player and for any team to have the ball go into the basket yeah. again and again? I didn't realize at halftime somebody said we shot 80% from the three. Really? Um, I, I told you guys, we had a pro scout. We had a couple in the other day, and they, one guy had been in 10 times. And he grabbed me and he said, here's what I don't understand. I sit here and watch your team shoot in practice. And they're like unbelievable and then they get in the games and guys are shooting air balls the same guy i saw make 15 in a row gets in a game and shoots an air ball how how is that and i told the players that it's it's more mental because you know again and and it's contagious if one guy makes it another guy makes it it's a little bit contagious but um you know making free throws and doing the stuff that we're doing and we're just getting better. It's, it's, you know, we're an athletic, long team. We can block shots, can play different ways, can play bigger team and play a smaller team, and your small team still 6'9", 6'9", 6'8". John, you talk every year about your best teams eventually become empowered. Is this team close to that? Getting closer. Getting closer. Um, we don't, you know, P.J. becomes that beast of a guy. Shea and, and is doing it. Quade wants to do it. And now, because he's playing the way we need him to play, not how he played in high school, this is how you need to play. Now, all of a sudden, you have guards that can kind of talk and do it. Um, Jared gives you a little bit of that, too. Because leadership that you want on your team and the empowerment you want is not one guy. You're trying to teach every one of these kids what it means to be a servant leader, what it means to be about each other. And if you can have a team of four or five or six guys that are capable of leading, you have room for error. A guy's not playing well. A guy's get sick. A guy's just struggling. Then someone else picks it up and, and takes the mantle. John, when did you learn that Kevin didn't have any issues with eligibility? And did you talk to him about that today before the game? I didn't. I mean, I, that was all the university dealing with it. I, didn't, I wasn't involved in any way. So, but I, I felt good about it, I, you know. What did you think of how your team kind of continued to pass well, even when Missouri seemed to change up the defensive looks? Yeah, we were good. The guys were good today. And, and that, like I said, Missouri is one of the top 25 defensive teams and one of the top 25 offensive teams in the country. 
and they played the same kind of schedule we have. Maybe ours is a little bit harder, but they played a tough schedule. And so you're looking at a team that, um, you know, we ended up shooting 54 and 62 and 73 and only turn it over nine times. That's why the score was what it was. Uh, but I, I'll say it again. In, you know, in March, you've got to be able to score more than 60. There was a time in this season we were 62 was a big number, 63. I kept telling these guys, you can't win in that tournament. You've got to be able to get 75, 80 on the board against a good team uh, because they may get the same on you because they're a good team. And we're starting to, uh, you know, play and figure it out and proud of them. John, what, are you, what options are you considering about getting Nick going? And, and how important is he for the long term? Yeah, he's, he's important. He and Sasha both. I mean, one of those guys, you know, and again, you put one in and then you try the other. And whoever has it going, you can go with them. Because we're going to play some teams that have a guy that they can guard better uh, than Jared or PJ because of size. Um, or Wenyon because of uh, physique. But, you know, again, just like Hami, they're responsible for their performance. We're going to continue to work with them and figure stuff out, you know. But we're not, you know, it's just the way these kids are playing right now, Jared and PJ, I, it's, they're playing better than the other guys. So guess what? This isn't communism. It's not what this is. John, what did you like best about Kevin's play tonight? Well, um, he was patient in the second half when he didn't play much in the first half. Um, you know, and, and he came out and he, it's amazing in the last three weeks how much he's learned to read screens, to where he can bump to to get shots, how he can get in the middle, where he can find PJ, which he did on the baseline. He just, and we do, we're doing this stuff every single day, and he needs it badly. And Hami, we're doing it with every single day. Um, you know, there are certain things that we're just saying, and we're scrimmaging every single day. We scrimmage. Now, you say this late in the season, you're scrimmaging? Yes. And I'm scrimmaging with different lineups. So they're four minute segments. Scrimmage, let's go. So we're doing drills for 45 minutes that we need and different things we're getting them to think about. And then an hour of 45 minutes of scrimmaging and then shooting and other things that we're trying to get done. This team is different. It's a different team for me. It's taken me a while. And it's not their fault. I mean, I'll say it again. Jared coming at midseason was put us in a scramble mode. But this team is playing more like my UMass teams than my some of my teams here or even my Memphis teams. This, this team is a little playing a little bit like that. We're, you know, and again, we only had nine offensive rebounds. But it's hard. Be, we didn't miss that many shots. You know, you're not going to have as many when you're making that many shots. Hey, Cal, you've always talked about demonstrated performance quite a bit. And it seems to be having an impact on their body language and just kind of how they're carrying themselves on the court during these last three games. Well, here's what you got. It started with Shea. Um, Shea would come in at 7 in the morning and work out, shoot. He would then watch video. Um, he never missed a class, never late, never late for a tutor, did everything he was supposed to. And every day when we practice, he was, here he comes, teeth and feet, enthusiastic. And I, and I looked at the guy and I, guys and I said, who's our best player? This was about three, four weeks ago. Who's our best player? Shea. It ain't even close. Well, let me tell you what he's doing. Let me ask you, what are you doing? Any of you come in at night? Any of you, why don't you join him in the morning? How about some of you that get, are late or miss a tutor or do that? He doesn't. So, what, are you tired? What, he's not? What, has he got a different body than you? Maybe you're not getting enough rest. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe you're not eating right. Who's the best in the weight room, Robert? Shay. So he's also the best in the weight room. Do you wonder why he's making himself the player he is? How about people join him? And so we've had some guys, Hami, I've been in the office 10, 11 at night. I look out and he's out there shooting. I feel so good that I can stick with him. Listen, I said this before. Um, kids playing poorly and a, and a parent would, is he, is he working hard, coach? Is he spending extra time? Because if he isn't, that's on him. 
Coach, is he listening to you? Is he doing what you're asking him to do? Because if he isn't, he shouldn't be playing. This is a parent that does not enable, that doesn't say, well, you take him out, but you don't take him out. You do that. Why is he playing? No, that's enabling. And then the other side of it is, okay, coach, please love him and stick with him and don't kick him to the curb. Let him know you're with him and let him keep fighting. And that's what we try to do with all these kids. But I'm telling you, if they don't listen, they're not doing all the stuff off the court they're supposed to do, don't blame me. I don't even want to hear it. But if they are trying and doing everything right, they deserve to keep getting opportunities because I've done this 35 years, they will break through. It just takes time and it's torturous. I love the fact that our fans gave Hami like a standing ovation. It's a great, see that, that's what fans should do. Instead of being down on a kid, that's someone's son. That's someone's child. And if it were their child, how would you want them to be treated? And now all of a sudden they have picked – you should see the smile on his face in there. And, they, and the players love it. They knew he was struggling. John, it's – defensive effort, it seems like, has been growing. Yeah. And now it looks like they're even enjoying it. Are they yeah. having fun with that? Do you see it that way? You probably have to ask them. But we – any breakdowns we have, because these teams we're playing in our league are really good, they score. So if there's a lack of communication, if a guy runs a gap when he's supposed to be chasing, um, if a guy on a pick and roll, we were switching and he's back even today, number three comes off, bang, bang, and where are you? You're supposed to be higher. But the reality of it is we're scrambling now. Now all of a sudden there's effort plays we're making. Out of nowhere, a guy's covering for another guy. What happens when that's your team and you can trust each other, you can risk more. And the more you can risk, the better you're going to be, especially turning people over, getting some breakouts, and getting some free baskets. But no one will risk if they think they're on the court by themselves. I'm just going to guard my man. I'm not going to help anybody. No one's helping me. And it's really difficult when you play that way. This te- we did for a while. This team is beginning to know that we got to do this together. we got to be about each other. You mentioned your UMass team. Conzo just came in here and said we could not match their toughness. What goes into a team developing that, you know, being as young as they are? Sometimes you got to put different guys on the floor. Dudes that are out there and playing the most minutes are the toughest guys we have. They told me after Arkansas, your your bench scored 36 points. Yeah, because three of my best players are coming off the bench. (laughs) You're going to score a lot of points. So, again, this team, I love the fact P.J. didn't care that he's not starting. and said one word. And he's playing his best right now. I didn't start Wenyon in the second half. He didn't say anything. These guys are all right now bought into what we have to do. We got a couple guys thinking they should play more. But look at the guy in front of you. And if I really think that, I'll say, who do you think you should be playing in front of? Tell him to his face. And that dude would probably laugh at him. You're out of your mind. Lucky you're playing, you're playing at all. I mean, that's how this is, this is the competitiveness. But we're all for you. Be ready for your opportunity. We need you. This team, we only got 10 guys. How about Brad Suri, by the way? <laughs> he missed the first one. I told him, you shoot this next one. Shoot it, you hear me? He started laughing. Happy for him, though. Thanks, guys.